Arthurton. You'll never want to leave. Hey, everybody. My name is Welland, and we are doing a first look today of Jenny Leclue, Detective Vu, a thrilling mystery adventure about a man walking in the rain creepily. <laughs> My opinion of him, right? <laughs> oh, but I'm the one controlling him. So I guess I'm the creepy one here. The umbrella's not even on my head. <laughs> but I have a hat too, so I guess that's okay. Are we going into Arthurton or away? Danger, no swimming. Okay, I have some kind of device here. Am I trying to line it all up? Oh, with this line I guess? How do I do the one in the middle? Oh, I guess I gotta do it like this first. And then move that. And then we can move the whole thing. Oh, but it kind of moves at different paces too, so that's kind of annoying. But no worries, we kind of got it. Secret underground base. <gasps> oh, my God. What? Who? Oh, I must have dozed off. Perhaps we need a spot of tea to wake us up. What do you say, Rufus? Rufus wants to go to sleep in the middle of the night. Yes, yes, quite right. Better get back to work. This book won't write itself. Maybe I should start somewhere easier. I'll come back to the prologue later. The sun rose over another perfect day in picturesque Arthurton. Still haven't seen the title or character just yet. To the casual observer, Arthurton seemed like any other small, quiet town. It was nestled in a valley between two mountains. Lined by lustrous forests. And perched on the edge of a pristine lake. With a secret base inside. It 
It had a main street with all the essentials, including a place to sip coffee. It had schools, a college, a church, and a police station. Agatha Christie's. Oh, Agatha Krusty's. <laughs> You'll kill for a taste, fresh baked daily. It even had a museum no one ever visited. It was the kind of place you might find anywhere on your travels. <laughs> the pharmacy is called the Great Placebo. Oh my god. Typical, maybe even forgettable. But there was one thing in Arthurton that was unlike any other town in the whole world. Actually, it was a girl. Her name was... Jenny LeClue. And she was the world's greatest detective! Finkelstein Residence? Oh, hello, Glenda. Yes, he said he might ring. Okay, patch me through then. Richard? Yes, I got it. I did. And my answer is no. I understand that, but... Yes, of course. But... No, no, no. Nothing is settled. I'm not going to do it. It goes against everything my books stand for. Somebody asking me to write something? No, not yet, but... If I could just... Please, listen to what I'm saying! I'm not getting a word in there. Oh, that's what I was writing. Oh, it was the kind of place you might find anywhere on your travels. Typical, maybe even forgettable. But there was one thing in Arthurton that was unlike any other town in the whole wide world. Actually, it was a girl. And now what? Chapter 1. The sun rose over another perfect day in picturesque Arthurton. Wait, we just read this. <laughs> Did you want me to... Um... Hmm. Yes. Letter to Finkel fans, draft. Well, it's me again, Arthur K. Finkelstein. And here we are at book 38 of the Jenny LeClue series, her most joyful adventure yet. Oh! Ah, okay, Jenny's not... Jenny's a character in the books. Thank you to all the new Jenny LeClue fans out there. You have both been incredibly supportive. There's only two fans? <laughs> both? To answer your questions, despite any rumors you may have heard, of course the Jenny books will continue, as long as there is ink in my pen and ribbon in my typewriter. Yes, it will be more of the same. I refuse to change my formula. Arthurton will always be a safe and happy place. Oh, this might be the list of... Kickstarter backers? I think this game was crowdfunded. Hmm. Alright. Can play with that a little bit. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! We're doing it! <laughs> Why? I don't know. Whoa, what do you want to do with the... Just want to move it back and forth? Don't play with your food. From the office of Richard Inkwell. Dear Arthur, I hope all is well. Afraid I've got bad news, old chum. There's no easy way to say it, so I've attached the latest book sales numbers. Ah. Nowadays, young readers want more mystery and danger. You're losing them with Jenny's increasingly timid and repetitive adventures. One bit of good news, it's too late for the stores to cancel their orders for the next book, so we're going to give you one last go 
and see if you can breathe some life into the old girl. We want you to try a proper murder mystery, start killing people off, add some drama. The bottom line is, if you don't step it up, I'm afraid it's a case of Jenny and the last hurrah. It says I'm not a murderer there. <laughs> oh, that's what's happening. That's what I was getting the phone call about. In other positive news, someone from a real newspaper finally reviewed your last book. <laughs> what did they say about it? Jenny Leclou and the Missing Marmalade Sandwich. The 38th and hopefully last book in a series, which is very much past its prime. Once a collection of mystery stories cherished by children all over the world, Jenny Leclou has since taken a nosedive into mediocrity. Mmm, without reservation, mmm. Worst piece of something, something, something. Oh my god. The only mystery left in Arthurton is how this trash keeps getting published. This reader nearly died of boredom. On a positive note, the book makes a great doorstep. Wow, that's... That's really... That's a scathing review. <laughs> the guy took the worst bits out. My editor, I guess? I imagine all this might come as a bit of a shock, but we've got to move with the times. Throw in a murder or two, a dash of real tragedy, and who knows? Maybe you've got one great story left in you. I'll ring you later to discuss. Sorry about your career. Chin up though, eh? Richard Inkwell. <laughs> P.S. Squash next week? At least you'll have time to work on that backhand soon. Oh, yeesh. I'm not doing too great here. But what can I do about it? Her name was Jenny Leclou, and she was the world's greatest detective. Oh yeah, that was the last line from earlier anyway, but um... Hmm. I guess I just want to exit now? You don't understand what you're asking for! You want me to turn Jenny's world upside down? Kill off my characters and destroy everything I've built over the last 30 years? Fine. I'll give you what you want. But I warn you, I'm a stream of consciousness writer. And you have unleashed my fury. Good day, sir. Boring? Predictable? Ha. Huh. If it's murder they want, it's murder they'll get. Passionately written book might be exactly what we need here. Maybe it used to be like a kid-friendly story, but now we gotta amp up the blood and the violence. <laughs> Chapter 1. It should have been another perfect day in Arthurton, but today was different. And nothing would ever be the same again. To begin with, Jenny Leclou was dead. Whoa, that might be a little bit too much, old man. Her skin was pale. Her eyes glossy and frozen. What cruel fate had befallen our beloved detective? <laughs> no, no, no! Never move the victim! Mrs. Leclou, she's doing it again. <sighs> Jenny Leclou, you are a dead body. Dead bodies don't talk. Ah, a great detective trusts their instincts, follows the evidence, turns in the report on time. SC on decapitation and dismemberment due next week. Oh my god. Julie Leclou, former detective, teaches dumb students, terrible cook, great mom. Oh, detective family. But he's doing it wrong. As wonderful as it would be if all cadavers were so talkative, we must deduce the cause of death without their help. With only the evidence laid before us, we build a picture from the fragments left behind. We collect clues, interpret the data, and solve our puzzle one piece at a time. Until it feels as if the victim is speaking to us. But Jenny is right, Jonathan. You mustn't disturb the crime scene. 
vital evidence could be lost. Sorry, Mrs. Leclou. <laughs> it's class for detectiving. Okay, you've all had a chance to study the body. Who can postulate how she met her demise? Oh, me, me! I think it was an accident? Yeah, she obviously wasn't looking where she was going. So she slipped on the wet floor and cracked her head open like an egg. And then she bled to death. Really? How can you tell? Well, there's a giant pool of blood around her head. <sighs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I was being sarcastic. Oh. Actually... You're both wrong. What? It was cold-blooded... Murder! Murder? Don't be ridiculous. Where's the murder weapon? There's no evidence anyone else was even here. Oh yes there is! It was murder, and I can prove it. The case of the dead lab assistant. Jenny had read all the books. She'd absorbed all her mother's teachings. But there was nothing quite like getting your hands dirty. How many people get the chance to solve their own murder? The first step in any good deduction was collecting evidence. Seemingly insignificant details could provide a vital piece of the puzzle. First, I'll search the crime scene for clues. Then she'd analyze the data. And finally, deduce the real cause of death. While her mouth seems like a good start here, eight clues. The victim has a green smudge on her lips. It's not lipstick. Poison? There's no doubt the victim lost a lot of blood. You're right, but there's also a stab mark here. Jenny's blue sweater was scruffy and quite uncomfortable. But her grandmother had knitted it, and so it was her favorite. The more it itched, the closer she felt to her. Oh, that's not really a clue. <laughs> Approximately eight times to eight sizes too big. And covered in mud. Oh. Those are really, really big shoes. Why would she wear shoes that are not her size? The floor is wet and slippery. But also immaculately clean. Oh. The plot thickens. Mr. Beans, the ends justify the beans. <laughs> what a waste of perfectly good coffee! Jenny's love for coffee was almost as strong as her passion for crime solving. Chalky green residue on the rim. Smells like burnt matches. Burnt matches? What could that be? Oh, well, we have six clues now, but, uh... We need all eight to move on. Without her trusty bifocals, Jenny couldn't see the nose in front of her face. They were her window to her world and the lens through which she focused her keen detective vision. Yeah, maybe that's kind of related. It wasn't Jenny's style to wear accessories, but this hair clip was the exception. Its function as a lockpick had saved Jenny from a long night trapped in her school locker. She'd worn it ever since. I've seen enough. Time to wrap this case up. Well, it seems like it might be some kind of poison, but what's with the boots? Jenny was a meticulous record keeper, noting every relevant clue in her trusty journal. A great detective knew that solving a mystery was simply a matter of connecting the dots. I'm certain this wasn't a mere accident, now I just need to prove it. Well, we can prove it wasn't an accident. But, uh... Yeah. 
What? Not the poison? How do I know the victim didn't slip? How do I know the victim didn't slip? I wanted to use the poison, but it's not here. It's not the sweater. The floor is wet and squeaky clean. The boots. And... I was wearing glasses. If I wasn't wearing glasses, then that might be a slip. Maybe the wet floor? Hmm. The victim's boots are filthy. They should have left big, muddy footprints on the floor. Ah, I didn't even put that together. We have to look at it in conjunction. So where are they? Wait. This means that somebody else was here, but who? Either someone washed away her footprints, or she was carried here. Ah! Okay, that proves she didn't slip. So how did she actually die? What was the real cause of death? Mouth? The mouth was the cause of death. Dry lips, crusty and stained green. And the coffee cup? Coffee cup with no coffee. Coffee, deadly but delicious. Smells of burnt matches. There's a green residue in the bottom of the victim's coffee cup. It smells of burnt matches. Phosphorus! What? Also found in common garden fertilizer. But I didn't know. The same green mark is on the victim's lips. Her coffee was spiked with fertilizer. Someone clearly wanted her dead. Ah, the case of the dead lab assistant. Gone before her time. Was it poison? Yes. A blow to the head? Yes. An accident? Certainly not. No footprints in an unshattered mug. She was killed somewhere else and carried here. This is a story of a scorned ex-lover. <sighs> Jenny. The gardener! And acting as revenge! Jenny. A deadly brew of fertilizer and caffeine coursing through the veins. That's quite enough, thank you. What happens to the gardener? Is this going to be on the test? Remember class, even the smartest criminals make mistakes. This is how we catch a killer. But what's the point of all this? Yeah, there hasn't been a murder in Arthurton in years. Every town has a dark side, even Arthurton. By doubting, we are led to question. And by questioning, we arrive at the truth. Okay, that's all for today. Am I a student or am I more like a um, teaching assistant? Don't forget, next class is our field trip to the morgue. Oh, <laughs> that's morbid. So have a light lunch. <sighs> the students need to think for themselves, Jenny. Not a student. I just happen to be really great at this because my mom's a great detective. That's why they're here at Gumbold, to learn. I just figured we all had places to go. Speaking of which... And where are you off to, young lady? I'm a dead body, Mom, remember? Dead bodies don't tell. See ya! Wait, before you go... I have something for you. Cool, what is it? If I told you, that would spoil the fun, wouldn't it? The Leclus didn't simply hand each other presents. They hid them. 
it was a family tradition. And Jenny had developed a sixth sense for finding them. With her trusty magnifying glass at her side, nothing eluded her. Oh. Okay. Oh. This right here? That seems kind of suspicious. No? There we go. A new journal! To Jenny, there was nothing better than the aroma of a fresh leather notebook. It smelled like mystery. Without missing a beat, she did what any detective worth her salt would do. She decorated it. I love nerds. <laughs> okay. Can I really? Oh, oh. Um. Hmm. Do I want to put it right in the center or like towards the top here? Yeah, okay, let's put it in the center. What else do I have? Oh, okay, that's different. Let's put a freaking gigantic magnifying glass on this. Where? Right in the middle. Why not? And... A lot of heart? Because I can? Ooh, inside the, the magnifying glass, how about that? It's not perfect, but uh... Eh, you know what, let's put it here. And... Hmm. Let's keep it simple. I don't want to add like 20,000 things on my thing here. Or maybe we'll put some inside if that's okay. A great detective never gives up. Love, Mom. A new journal meant new adventures. She imagined all the thrilling cases that would soon fill its pages. And on the first page, her mother had written an inscription. A great detective never gives up. Love, Mom. Oh, thank you. Are there a lot of mysteries in Arthurton, though? Oh, I can't add more stickers in here. That's awesome. Put a heart next to Mom. How about that? And then maybe we'll put like a gigantic star here, just because I can. Yeah. Okay. Find a map, keep it here. CEO, realist, dreamer, logical, emotional, planner, improviser. Dedicated, strong-willed, and direct. A brilliant leader who inspires others. A jack of all trades and a fountain of knowledge. But you can be inflexible and emotionally distant. Is that from some random quiz I took online? <laughs> Choosiness. You chose a creepy tune for the mysterious man to whistle. You chose something totally normal for the man to whistle. Oh, that's what it meant! Wasn't that creepy, though? It was like a nursery rhyme earlier, wasn't it? Look at how long this is. 18 pages of choices. That's why we're doing a first look today. <laughs> I love it! Thanks, Mom! Jenny? I wanted to... talk about... Um... To say, um... Somewhere in the back of Jenny's highly caffeinated brain, an alarm bell was ringing. Her mom was... hesitating. What could be causing her to act so out of character? Oh, we're observing her and finding out why this is the case? Limited eye contact, watery eyes, defensive body language, missing ring, crossed arms, feared brow. Jenny saw it coming from a mile away. Is my dad not in the picture? Her mother was about to get emotional. I really gotta go. No, Jenny, wait. I need your help. What? Really? Jenny couldn't believe her ears. It was extremely unusual for her mother to ask her for help. It must be something very important. 
Tracing the steps of a deranged killer? A cold case that only someone with Jenny's expertise could solve? <laughs> I've misplaced the student's S's on the capitation. See if you can find them for me before you leave. I have to run. Oh! Wow, the case of the misplaced papers. Are you sure you want to entrust me with such a complex task? I have no doubt you'll be able to find them. They're around here somewhere. Jenny was unsure if her mother was unable to detect sarcasm or just really good at ignoring it. Probably the latter. Oh, fine. What's the point? They're all going to fail anyway. Oh, I accidentally clicked the other one first. Even though I switched back later on. <laughs> A great detective learns the most valuable lessons from their biggest failures. Okay. Okay, Mom. I'll find them before I leave. On one condition. Yes? You have to let me help grade them. One of Jenny's favorite pastimes was grading papers. Nothing pleased her more than giving a big shiny F to an overconfident student. Don't push your luck. Please? Hmm. Okay. Yes! Find the papers and go straight home. But I'm meeting Keith tonight. No buts, remember? Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm still feeling the effects of being poisoned for your class. Well then, I have the perfect antidote. You're staying with your cousin this weekend, and you still need to pack. This again? Look, I considered your offer, Mom, and I'm going to have to decline. I'm old enough to take care of myself. I'll be back late tonight. There's meatloaf in the fridge. What do you want? Late again? What are you up to? How old am I, by the way? Sounds like my dad's not really in the picture, so just me and mom here. Jenny LeClue, it's been a difficult week. Could you please just do what you are told for once and stop asking questions? Fine. And try to stay out of trouble. When do I ever get into trouble? <laughs> well, I'm pretty young, because I don't even have all my teeth yet. All right, let's find these papers and get out of here. The case of the... <laughs> my sticker! The case of the dead lab assistant. Case closed. Mom was acting pretty weird today. No wonder. It's been a year. But it still hurts. Maybe my dad got into some kind of an accident. Jam jar. One of Jenny's earliest memories was making raspberry jam with her mom. It's the perfect substitute for blood in class demonstrations. And better tasting than the pig's blood, the textbook recommends. A lot less realistic, I would assume. Whoa, look at that crazy way I run. Looking rather trim today, Ethan. New diet. <laughs> What's the matter? Lost your funny bone? <sighs> She's certainly a kid that knows how to entertain herself. Chalkboard. A great detective. Becoming a great detective took more than book smarts. You needed real-life experience. And Jenny was always on the lookout for a chance to get her hands dirty. A great detective trusts their instincts, thinks like a killer. Follows evidence, turns in their report on time. The essay is due next week. Knows when to ask for help. But a great detective never makes it personal. Reveals their hand too soon, leaves their coffee unattended, never ever, or makes assumptions. Hmm. Good principles to abide by, I suppose. Please do not touch. Huh. Someone must be running an experiment.
Ooh, gross. Pretty soon it's going to sprout legs. But we don't know what this is. It's just bacteria stuff. Where are the missing papers? We can't get out of here, so it's gotta be around the lab somewhere, right? Oh! Did you see it? Is that it? No, really? What? I thought I had it! Oh, do I have to go from this side? Oh, no, 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 no. What if... You want me to look at the chalkboard, but you want me to go all the way down. Oh, that's it. Wow, this was kind of difficult, because I had no idea where to look. There we go. It's only one paper, though. It's one of the students' term papers. You can tell by the terrible handwriting and erroneous conclusions. <laughs> Mom must have put them behind the chalkboard. Just one? Well, we only need one, or did you want more? Hmm... I can very quickly walk around again to see if we- Oh! Like, you want me to look at it like this? Didn't do it quite right there. Is that how we look at it, or is there another way for us to... Um... Okay, hold on, we can move this. There we go. Found you. Time to get out of here. Finally! Whew! <laughs> this is like the first little puzzle, and I got stuck for so long not knowing where the papers were. Yeesh. The case of the misplaced papers. Conclusion. Waste of time. Case closed. Oh, don't be like that, Jenny. Helping your mom, that's always something nice, right? Well, we finished two cases here. Kind of. Pretending to be a dead body and finding papers, so I feel like it's a good spot to end off our first look. Uh, so far, I feel like the presentation and the aesthetics, the visual style, is really, really strong. It looks really dang good. And it's very easy to tell that a lot of heart has been put into this. I've actually heard about this game for a long time now, and I think... It's been in production for basically five years, which is half a freaking decade. That's a long time. But I have some reservations about this because I checked out some of what other people were saying about this game, and a point that got brought up a few times was how the game starts dragging on in the second half, maybe because of budget constraints, and more importantly, it ends on a cliffhanger. And there's not really an ETA for when the story will be finished, whether in a DLC or other games. Ultimately, what I can personally tell you is that of the around half an hour that we both saw here, I really did enjoy it, but I don't have the capacity to really dig into this more because there's like 20 million things that I want to play and I never know what's good before I play it. So what I'm trying to do right now is play a little bit of each thing and figure out what I really want to keep playing. Alright, well, this was Wellens and thank you so much for joining me with Jenny Leclue Detective Vu. Great name, by the way. I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed playing it, and I will see you all in another place, in another time.